DeSoto and the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers from coast to coast present Groucho Marx. In You Bet Your Life. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is picture. P-I-C-T-U-R-E. And now, the one, the only... Well, here I am again with a chance for each of our couples to win $2,000. And tonight, somebody might win $10,000. We have some young single people, Groucho. You have? Yes, Miss Sharon Harrell and Mr. Ted uh, Detterman. So, folks, you can please and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word, and you each get an extra $50. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Uh, Sharon Harrell and Ted Detterman, eh? Thank you. Well, you're a mighty fine-looking couple there. How old are you, Sharon? I'm 17, Groucho. Oh, well, you're only a baby. And what is your age? 19, Groucho. Ah, uh, you're a baby, too. Where are you from, uh, Ted? Redwood Falls, Minnesota. You have a job, Ted, or uh, you go to school, or what are you doing? Well, both, Groucho. You go to school and have a job? Yes, sir. I have a part-time job, and I also attend Claremont Men's College. There's a nice college up there at Claremont. It's very fine, Claremont it's Men's it's College. Nice and quiet up there, too. Well, at times it's quiet, and at times it isn't. Yeah. I mean, Scripps Women's College is just right across the street. Yeah, I know, us, yes. So. Uh, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> I say they're right across the Scripps College for Women. It's right across the street from And you go to a men's college, and the women's college is across the street, you say? Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the most evil laughs I've ever heard. <laughs> Your crosswalk must be worn down about eight feet below street level, isn't it? <laughs> you go to college, Sharon? No, sir. I'm a senior at Venice High School. Oh, well, you're pretty close to college, huh? Yeah. Are you going to Claremont? Uh, uh gee, I'd sure like to. <laughs> I'm going to try to talk her into scripts. Yeah. Well, I'd rather go to Claremont. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can use a mascot. Ted, do you engage in any extracurricular activities in college, or are you too busy leaping back and forth across the street? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do, Groucho. I'm president of the sophomore class here at Claremont Men's College. Oh. How'd you get elected? I mean, what promises did you make that you know you're not going to keep? <laughs> well, uh, one of them was uh, putting lights in our parking lot there. <laughs> <laughs> didn't go over too big, though. <laughs> you wanted to put lights in a parking lot on a college campus? <laughs> and you were elected on that? <laughs> <laughs> you're lucky you weren't Todd and Feather. <laughs> well, I'm sorry we have to conclude this conversation because you're a lovely pair of youngsters and I thoroughly enjoyed talking to you. But now I want to give you a chance to win some money, so uh, let's play your bet your life. You selected royal history. If you miss two questions in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. Are you ready? All right, what country built the Maginot Line? France. La Belle France is right. We have one right, three more right, and you'll have $1,000. What English queen ruled for 60 years? Queen Elizabeth? Oh. No, I'm sorry. It's Queen Victoria. Oh, you have one wrong. Don't miss the next one or you're out of the game. Uh, yeah. Peron was tossed out of what country? Argentina. They're wrong, huh? Argentina. Right. Argentina is right. You're back on the right track with one right again. What happened on June 6, 1944 in Europe? Uh, D-Day. D-Day is right. Don't go any further. You're halfway to $1,000. Two more right and it's yours. The Mikado is the head man in what country? <laughs> In what country is the Mikado the head man? Siam. Oh, Ted. Siam? Japan. Oh. oh. How could you miss that? Da -da -dum -da 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 -dum no, that's Penaboy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Three little maids from school, are we? All right. And you have one wrong. Boy, is my nose red, huh? <laughs> In South America, who is known as the Liberator? Um, I believe it was uh, Juan who's Juan who's... Mm. No, not Don Juan. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was Juan Jose. 
Jim and Nancy? Well, you should know this. It's Simon Bolivar. Oh, oh, good green. You got two in a row wrong, you're out of the game. He, wrong, he owned all those tin mines on there. Oh, they're out, huh? Yeah, they're out. Oh, I'm finished. sorry. You missed two in a row. You're all through. Well, you're not going to go away broke. I'm going to ask you one question for $100. Name one country that was involved in the Russo-Japanese War. <laughs> what is it? Jap Japan. Grant's tomb is right. Huh? <laughs> sorry you didn't win war, but thanks anyway for being with us. You bet your life. Gracho, Mrs. Edna Stromberg, and Mr. Harvey C. Harmelink are waiting to see you, so folks, you can please and meet Groucho Marx. Ednis, welcome, welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the sacred word and you win an extra hundred smackolas. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Edna Stromberg and Harvey C. Harmelink, eh? Harvey, what's the C for? The C? I never use it, Groucho. Oh. I just sign my name H.C. and let it go at that. What does the C stand for? You going to insist? I, uh, well, I'm going to track well, this down. Right. It's Clarence. <laughs> well, Harvey, I see your point. <laughs> now, what do you want me to call you? Harvey, Harv, or Homolink? Well, Groucho, all of my friends call me Dutch. Where are you from, Dutch? Uh, I was born in uh, Rock Valley, Iowa. Oh. What sort of work do you do, Dutch? Well, I'm a fire engineer with the city of San Diego Fire Department. Oh, I see. Well, what is your job with this fire department? Well, specifically, I operate a fire apparatus. To you, uh, an apparatus probably is a uh, bundle of hose on a pumper. How do you know that's what I regard an apparatus? <laughs> now, was that all you do, just drive a pumper truck? Oh, in addition to that, like I have... a pumpernickel, have a pumper truck. Extracurricular activity. I'm president of our firefighters' union down there. Well, they have a union, huh? Yes, we've been organized you... for 37 years. Is that so? What are you after, shorter hours and cooler fires? <laughs> what does the union do for the firemen, uh, Dutch? Well, our primary function, Groucho, is to uh, get wage increases, do shorten any of the, the boys, hours. Any and... of the boys call you Clarence down there? Well, they didn't up until this time, but I think they will now. <laughs> Maybe you better quit and go back to Iowa, huh? Uh, who are you again? You're a general? Uh, no. Edna Stromberg, huh? Where are you from, Edna? I'm from Brookville, Pennsylvania. Oh, why did you leave the old hometown? Did you run away with a saxophone player or something? No, Groucho. I went to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, to beauty college. Now, you wanted to become a beauty operator, is that it? That's right. Well, how did, how did it work out? Were you successful? <clears throat> I was a big flop. You were, huh? I was a, a mess for five years. You were a mess for five years? Yes. Well, that's, that's pretty near the record, I think. I didn't think. like people. I think the record up to now for a mess was four and a half years. But... <laughs> now, if you didn't like people, you were in a good spot as a beauty operator. Why didn't you like people? Well, I was very negative, Groucho. You were, huh? And then mm. uh, when did you become positive? If you were negative, you should have gone in the dark room up there and got developed. <laughs> brought that in from left field, huh? <laughs> Three years ago. What's, what, what's, what is that the answer, what is that the answer to? That's what I, mean. I don't know what I asked you, huh? <laughs> well, just what brought you out of the negative stage? Did you, did you get your battery charged? <laughs> no. Well, yes. <laughs> well, that's a clear-cut answer. <laughs> That's what we like, definitive answers on this show. Well, what happened? I took the Dale Carnegie course. You took it where? <laughs> Here in Los Angeles. Oh, well, that's the fellow who wrote the book on how to win friends and influence people. Right? That's right. I borrowed that book once, and right off the bat, I made an enemy. <laughs> I did, I forgot to retain the book. <laughs> well, you're a lovely couple, and Edna, I suggest you join the San Diego Fire Department first thing in the morning. <laughs> Now, let's see how much money you can win the quiz, because you're going to play your bet your life. You selected the observation quiz. I'll ask you some questions. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. When you're facing it, on what side of a standard sink is the hot water faucet installed? Left, Left side. That's right. You have one right. Three more right, you'll have $1,000. How many times? I T-I-N-E-S. Is that the way you pronounce yes. it? Yes. Uh, I thought that was a song. How many times? Does the standard dinner fork have? 
Four? Four is right. And you're halfway to $1,000. Two more right and assures. How many matches in an ordinary booklet of paper matches? Twenty? That's correct. One more right and you'll have $1,000. When you see a rainbow, what color is on top? Come on, let's have an answer. Red? Red is right. And you've got four in a row, you win $1,000. <laughs> Yes, now look, you won $1,000. You can keep it and quit, or you can come back later at the end of the show and try to double your money. You may even get a crack at $10,000. So you go over there and sit down, and Edna, you sit on Clarence's lap. And no matter what you decide to do, thanks for being on the show. Now talk it over. Groucho, I'd like to introduce Mrs. Bertha Gottlieb and Mr. Robert Maxwell now. So folks, you go in, please, and meet. Groucho Marx. Welcome to your bet to life. Say the secret word and you each get an extra $50. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Yes. Wow. I'm Bob. <laughs> Which one is Bob? Me. <laughs> well, just checking. I was just, we do a lot of checking around there. Now, Bertha, I can see you, so I'll start with you. Uh, <laughs> where are you from? From Kasha, Hungary. Kasha, Hungary? Yes, sir. Well, how long have you been married, Bertha? I married 40 years. Where did you meet the uh, lucky Mr. Gottlieb? I met Mr. Gottlieb in the New York subway. Well, that's a very romantic place to meet a maid. <laughs> well, what happened in this tunnel of love? Well, my husband came in and asked me to let, to let him know where Times Square was. Well, when did you see him the next time? I saw him six months later. I, I heard from him six months later from California. Now, wait a minute. You gave him directions to get to Times Square? <laughs> and he wound up in California? No, I gave him directions Why to Why didn't go you to... write it down for him? <laughs> I wrote him down my name and address. I don't understand. He, were Only you handing he... him out there in the subway? No, he was a very nice young man. Uh -huh. And he looks to, looked to be very trustworthy. Uh -huh. So I gave him my name and address. And has he, has he lived up to this uh, promise? <laughs> He Did came back nine years later to marry me. <laughs> well, it takes a long time in the subway, you know. <laughs> and let's see, your name is General Grant? <laughs> no, I'm Bob Maxwell. Now, what do you do for a living? Do you specialize in anything besides growing that hair? Well, I do a little bit of everything, Groucho. But by nature, I guess you'd say I'm an inventor. Well, what have you invented? Give us a sample invention or a simple invention. Hmm. Well, a few years ago, I worked on one quite a while. It was a uh, boundary layer control device for heliocopters. Well, there's a big demand for that. I'm, <laughs> I'm glad you finally got around to it. Eh? Well, how does this mousetrap work that you built? Well, it's... Could you explain it to uh, Bertha over here? I don't know. <laughs> Well, you certainly couldn't explain it to me. Try it on Bertha, huh? Well, it's a little complicated. Uh, I suppose you think the subway is simple, <laughs> huh? Well, you would think that when air, at moving at several hundred miles an hour, blows over a wing or any surface, it would follow it very closely, at least blow the dust off of it. Bertha, you're not listening. <laughs> well, I but, look at uh, it. But it doesn't. <laughs> It sounds funny, but it doesn't. <laughs> what happens is that the air stagnates along the surface. Mm. And so that It's not the... doing very well here, either. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it no longer follows the contour of the, of the wing. You want to uh... ask him any questions, but <laughs> Now, have you got any other earth-shaking inventions, like an earthquake? <laughs> well, gee, I hardly got through that one. Let me see. Yeah. <laughs> well, I got a simple one. I figured out a way to be relaxed. Now you're talking, huh? <laughs> What's your system for breaking the roulette wheel? Do you use a hammer? <laughs> well, you should have at least a thousand dollars to make it worth your while to gamble on one. And it takes quite a while to find the hot numbers. About a year, I'd say. You uh, could uh, break Las Vegas in a year? If they left that wheel in there, you could. You hear that, Las Vegas? <laughs> You've only got a year left. <laughs> 
Mrs. Gottlieb, when we left you, you were happily married and your husband was in the subway <laughs> trying to grope his way through to California. <laughs> now then, uh, back from California. Do you have any hobbies? Yes, I have a dog. You have a dog? Yeah. I thought a hobby was a horse. It was a hobby. It's a dog. A dog? Well, what kind of a dog is he? Is he a smart the, dog? The most talented world, dog in the whole world. Is that so? What, what can he do? He can add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Would you like to see him? I will bring him in. You've got him with you? <laughs> can you get him to sit down? Ask him how much two and two is. How much is two and two? <laughs> Gentlemen, come out here a minute. <laughs> come out here. I want to see you. Come out here. <laughs> you notice that this dog added that up uh, without using a pencil? <laughs> Happen, don't you? You're going to wind up fetching my slippers, and he's going to wind up doing the commercials. <laughs> well, stick around, watch him. It's very interesting. Yeah, do another one, uh, Bertha. It's great the way she makes him sit down. <laughs> he's adding up even when she doesn't ask him. How many players are on baseball team? Nine. That's nine. That's right. Three times three. Let's see you make him sit down. <laughs> you said you're well trained, all right. <laughs> well, that's enough arithmetic. Now, what is his attitude on private power as opposed to public utilities? <laughs> Can he do any other tricks, like sitting down? <laughs> George, he did it. <laughs> Could he fetch the newspaper for you in the morning? Yes, he goes out, but he never brings it back. <laughs> I can understand that. By the time he's through working the crossword puzzle and reading the stock reports, he's forgotten what you sent him out there for. out of here during the quiz. He's too smart for us. He'd, he'd clean us out. Let him sit out front, huh? I think there's an empty seat out there. George, there's an empty seat out there. Put him in K-9. <laughs> well, you're an unusual couple, and I'd like to go on talking to you, but it's time to play You Bet Your Life. Now, we want one answer between you on all these questions. United States geography. I'll ask you some questions. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. You ready? In what city is the Golden Triangle? Hmm. Talk it over. San Francisco? No, it's Pittsburgh. It's you have one wrong, don't get another one wrong, and you're out of the game. All right, the Rio Grande empties into what? Bodhi of Woda. Oh, that's an easy one. That's seven. Uh, Gulf of Mexico. Uh, Gulf of Mexico is right. Back on the right track with one right. What Canadian province is directly north of Washington State? Um, British Columbia. Right, British Columbia is right. Two right, two more right, you'll have $1,000. In uh, what city is the loop? Is what? What city is the loop? In what city is the loop? L O O P. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. that's an idiot. Right, Chicago. <clears throat> Chicago. Chicago, that toddling town. One more right, and you'll have your thousand dollars. What is the smallest state? Uh, oh, Rhode Island. Rhode Island, that toddling town. <laughs> and you got four in a row right, so you win one thousand dollars. <laughs> Now, you want $1,000. You can keep it and quit, or else you can come back later and try to double your money. You may even get a chance at $10,000. Now, go over and sit down and talk it over with the dog. <laughs> <laughs> you bet your life. <laughs> uh, 
Well, here's the story on the big question, Groucho. The lady with the dog, Mrs. Gottlieb and her partner, have decided to leave with their $1,000 intact. Now, our second couple, Mrs. Stromberg and Mr. Harmelink, are going to risk half their earnings on a chance at $10,000. And here they are. Well, Clarence, here we are again. You've decided to go for the big question. Remember, if you miss it, you wind up together with $500. You pick a number, and you spin the wheel. And if this number comes up and your question, you answer correctly, you can win $10,000 between you. What number? Number uh, seven. Seven, now you turn the wheel. Give it a good spin. seven and you landed on seven so the question is worth ten thousand dollars if you win and it's worth five hundred dollars if you lose here we go in the war of 1812 an american naval hero mortally wounded gave a command that is now a familiar phrase in our language don't give up the ship tell me who is his naval hero talk it over All right, what's the answer you two have decided upon? Well, I, uh, we're going to take a guess at it, Groucho. I'm going to say Dewey. Oh, oh it was James Lawrence. Oh. I'm sorry you missed it, but you wind up with $500, so that isn't so bad. Congratulations, and thanks for being with us. Sorry you didn't win the big money, huh? George Fenneman signing off with a reminder from the National Safety Council. September is Child Safety Month, so parents teach them to cross at corners.